If you're starting a playthrough of Vampire the Masquerades 1, but you're unsure as to which skills you should focus on at the start, this video should be helpful. I will not be discussing any story spoilers, any quest spoilers, but of course I will be talking about which skills are more useful at different stages of the game. It's not going to be a min-max video, and it's not going to be a video telling you how to get the most skill points for the least number of experience, because of course that will involve a lot of minor spoilers. I may make such a video for those who are interested, but this is not it. This is going to be some basic advice. The first thing to understand is each level of a skill, a talent, or one of your attributes costs increasing amounts depending on the level. So the first um, rank you take in, say, the physical, let's go with strength, the first rank you would take would be level two, that will cost four. The next rank will cost eight. The rank after that would cost 12. And the final rank of all of the attributes costs 16 points. The same is true for abilities, except now it's three for the first level, three for the second level, six for the third level, nine for the fourth, and 12 for the, uh, for the fifth. Disciplines are even more expensive. It's five, 10, 15, and 20. This, of course, means it's a lot harder to become a master of one thing than competent at many. And indeed, because you gain experience a lot slower at the start of the game than you do at the end of the game, if you try to hoard your experience and save up to get better at something, you will probably spend a lot of time not improving and being very weak. In certain areas, you'll probably find you do need a little competence in. So what are those areas? That's really the critical question. Where should you spend those critical points early on in the game? Well, I'd start with Brawl. This one will come as a bit of a surprise to some people because, of course, this is what um, controls unarmed combat along with strength. And you might think, I don't want to punch people. I'm a vampire. I want to use guns or a, maybe I want to use a, a, a sword or something, but I don't want to punch people, right? You might want to punch people. I don't know. But let's say you don't. You still want some basic unarmed ability because that's what helps you feed. And I have not had a character yet where a little bit of brawl and strength wasn't helpful. Some characters have different ways of being able to get blood. But honestly, getting blood in the middle of combat or just grabbing someone face to face and, and feeding on them is useful all the way to the end of the game. This is something that I was using all the way through all of my playthroughs. And a couple of points of brawl, it only costs six experience. It's really quite cheap. I would also add a point of strength because that also controls unarmed. And for four experience, you get another point of unarmed and a point of melee. This is one of those cases where actually, even though this costs four and this costs three, this gives you a little bit more because it controls two skills. Some of the attributes are like that, some are not. But a, just two points in Brawl, two points of Strength, and honestly, that's enough for pretty much any character. And you will, you will gain an advantage from that pretty much throughout the entire game, even if your character is not the sort of strong, burly type. Security. You want a couple of points there. I mean, if you can get the third point, great. Um, dexterity as well, a point of dexterity. I wouldn't necessarily say you need more than one point of dexterity, to be honest, but one point of dexterity, couple of points of security, maybe even that third point for lock picking. You can use blood buff as well, which will help you with lock picking. You want a reasonable lock pick ability because there are loads of locks in this game. And let's be honest, we all want to know what's behind that door, what's in that chest, etc. It's it's really actually on all I would say an essential skill for me. Let's talk about combat. Now combat is not the centerpiece of this game. However, you will need to be competent at combat. Most people will tell you, well, become good at one, melee or firearms or brawl 
Although most people will tell you, unless you're playing Gangrel, melee is probably better. They'll say, focus on one. I'm actually going to tell you, you probably need a bit of both. It is possible to do a full melee run through, although towards the end, there are some enemies you absolutely do need ranged weapons for. And even in the middle, there are some enemies that are so annoying, is the politest way I could put it. Um, and perhaps having... Uh, a firearm of some sort is a reasonable idea because there are some enemies who just move around too much and you can't catch them when you're trying to hit them with an axe. They're really, really annoying. So you, you may need a couple of points in firearms even if you want to do a melee run and even if you want to do a firearm run, you might want a couple of points in melee because the early game firearms kind of suck. The starting pistol's terrible. Even the starting shotgun that you get, it's okay. But to be honest, you have to be pretty close. And I gotta say, the axe is just so much more devastating. That's the thing. The melee weapons you find at the start of the game are actually viable pretty much to the end of the game. You will find some better ones towards the very end. But the fire axe you find very early on, you can use that throughout most of the game. In fact, you can use it all the way through the game. Firearms, they just get better and better and better. I actually would say once you get about halfway through the game, once you find maybe a Glock, but definitely the Anaconda, firearms become far more viable. However, you, you, you're just going to find some scenarios where you're just using so much ammo and some of the enemies may even be a little difficult to shoot unless you've got celerity. So even if you're doing a heavy firearm run where you intend to max out firearm and perception, I'm going to tell you put a few points in melee. If you've got one point of strength, two points in melee. The first, you know, half of the game, you can still use your, your, your ranged weapons a little, but you can also just whip out the axe and slaughter the, the stuff that's easy to kill. Save yourself a little ammo. It really is going to make the, the, the early combat a lot easier. Save you a bit of ammo. You could argue, instead of putting points in melee, put it into finance or manipulation so you can buy ammo for cheaper. But to be honest, even when I did that, I kept switching back to my axe. There were just some moments where it was just, it was just so much easier. So just two points in melee... Again, the one point in strength is probably worth it, even if you're going a firearms route. If you're going a melee route, obviously two points in melee at the start is a good thing, and you're probably going to progress all the way. At some point, you want a couple of points in firearm. You won't need it until, you know, like the... not. Not necessarily the second half of the game, but maybe, you know, the, the, the last two-thirds of the game. There'll be a few times when you might want a gun, so get a couple of ranks in firearms. Don't be afraid of spending those points, firearms and melee. I think you'll get your um, you'll get your money's worth for them. And that's about it, really. I mean, I could have probably condensed this down to saying something like, make sure you've got unarmed combat to four, melee combat to four, and lockpick into, say, four or five at the early stage of the game, and then keep your combat, whether it's melee or ranged, reasonably up to date as you progress, and you should be fine. That's probably the, the main thrust of the advice here. Everything else, you could probably do whatever you want. Are there optimal builds? Yes. Are there builds that will make your life easier and some that make it harder? Yeah. But you can finish the game as long as you've got the bare minimum of feeding, fighting, and not driving yourself insane because you can't get into that chest that you really, really want to get into, you'll, you'll make it just fine. Beyond that, just go with your instincts and play what you think sounds cool. Some people are going to tell you, you know, one skill is better than another. Someone will say, oh, persuasion's better than intimidation or seduction. But the counter-argument to that is... Yeah, but seduction is seduction, you know. <laughs> I mean, uh, you get to seduce people in the clubs and intimidate. You, you get to scare people half to death. I mean, if that's something you want to do, do that. If, if, if it's much more important that you persuade the maximum number of people, then probably persuasion's the, the way to go. But if you would rather scare 
scare people into doing what you want them to do, do so. Have fun. You can always play another playthrough and, you know, do the suave, persuasive playthrough after you've done the I'm going to scare the living daylights out of everyone playthrough, yeah? You go with what you will have fun playing. Now, I do understand that the min-max type people will not be satisfied with the information I've given you in this video. It's way too vague, way too little, and you want more. You want to know which of these skills I would recommend you max, when you should do it, and how you should maximize the number of skills you can get for the experience you get throughout the game, yeah? I will make such a video. Be warned, it will contain some very, very minor spoilers. No plot spoilers, no story spoilers, but it will contain the odd, well, piece of advice on when to take certain skills. Yep, so just bear that in mind.